the sun has turned, the other stop coming directly. Ten more seconds. One thing that we know about Bashir Mirza, of course, is that he was a major icon in the field of advertising in Pakistan for many, many years. Um, do you think that that commercial exposure influences his work, that international exposure influences his work largely? And if so, sort of in what ways and to what extent do you think it, that it did? Well, uh, I'm not sure if the influence, uh, the, the design sensibility came from his advertising career, but I think it was his, mm, you know, training as a designer at the NCA because he did graduate in design, in graphic design. So I think uh, this is how um, he learned to uh, work. Uh, and once he told me that he preferred uh, to graduate in design because he knew that he would be able to get a job, uh, being a painter was going to be very difficult because we, as we all know, Bashir Mirza grew up uh, you know, uh, under very difficult economic conditions. And it was only a scholarship given to him that made it possible for him to go to NCA. So um, I think it was um, the four-year education at NCA that in some ways um, contributed to his design sensibility, So, uh, which surfaces in some of his work. I wouldn't say all his work because he was a, you know, exceptional draftsman. Line to him was very important. And you can see the, uh, the tensile quality of his line and, and how it is used by him to sort of uh, create an emotional kind of uh, image or, Im you know, to, to make his image emote. And, and, and um, you know, with Bashir Mirza, he did uh, have his own advertising company, he worked with advertising companies and uh, obviously that was a part of his life uh, and quite often there would be a canvas put up in his office and he would be painting, he would come out and paint and then sort of go back to his work uh, because uh, his advertising company was in his house and quite often you would see the canvas, he would be working on it as well as doing other design jobs. So I think everything went uh, together. Just a second. Yeah. Sorry, I'll huh. speak back around. Okay, sure. I won't be here. I have to go out for lunch as well. Oh, okay? Bye. That's my daughter trim now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, where do you want to? Uh, you think you'll you get an answer? Just give me, give me, that's perfect. Just give me 10 seconds and I'm just going to ask the next question if that's okay. So what, uh, what personality traits and characteristics do you think are, are best reflected uh, and most often reflected in Bashir Mirza's work? I think he was uh, concerned with human emotions and the human condition. And it, uh, his work is highly figurative. He enjoyed uh, working on the human figure. and. Uh, Throughout his earlier works, his earlier drawings, uh, he worked on the figure and even later on in his acrylic series where, uh, uh, you know, his brush works almost like a pen or a, a kind of a pencil when he kind of uh, creates this um, colored stroke that, um, you know, is like, almost like a, a sketch. Uh, uh, a colored sketch which becomes his painting. So um, for him the line was very important, he used it throughout. Uh, then in, if you look in his um, Lonely Girl series, you see uh, Bashir Mirza emerging as a colorist uh, and he used color uh, you know, very effectively. And it's almost like um, you know, 
it, that's the body of work, that one and in flower flower, that you see uh, the design sensibility of Bashim Riza emerging. Uh, did you ask that if which was my favorite uh, uh, body of work? It's very difficult to say because I think Bashir Mirza's um, drawings that he did throughout his life are excellent. Um, I think um, as good and as um, strong as one would say uh, Sadat Tan's drawings, maybe in some places more emotive. And um, and if you look at his paintings, the Lonely Girl series is an iconic body of work. And uh, after he returned from Germany, this body of work was created. And this was the time when I met Bashir Mirza and interacted with him. And um, uh, this was the time he also taught us uh, history of contemporary art. And he talked about um, what was going on in Europe at that time. And I think this body of work combines his influences from Europe of that time and design sensibility and the painterliness uh, you know, that he had uh, and created um, a wonderful, um, vibrant uh, work. Uh, and then uh, the Lonely Girl series is divided into two. One are the women mm, that he put projects, uh, you know, you know, uh, almost like um, he's looking at the liberated woman um, and he, a confident woman, which actually had not been painted by others. The, most artists looked at them as muse and as passive, uh, um, you know, protagonists in their work. But Bashir Mirza was looking at a different kind of woman and I think he was almost like acknowledging uh, the modern woman. But in the second part of his Lonely Girl series, which are nudes, again there's a lot of violence, uh, sexual violence in uh, Bashir Mirza's work. And sometimes you see that surface as well from time to time. And uh, if you look at, the, you know, uh, that is a body of work that I feel, you know, the Lonely Girl, the entire Lonely Girl series, is a very important body of work in Pakistan's art history. Then you look at his acrylic series that went on for a good uh, many years um, um, through the 80s and 90s. Um, the, through the late 80s it began and went on uh, till his death in 2000. And uh, that again, um, a lot of self-portraits have been done. He paints figurative work. This work is, uh, again, there's a lot of, it's very dynamic. Uh, again, as I said, he's using the brush almost like a pencil and he sort of um, does uh, linear uh, drawings uh, with the, uh, you know, with a, with a brush loaded with color and um, they're quick, they're spontaneous, they're full of energy and they're very expressive um, and I think that's where his draftsmanship comes in handy and he's able to convert that into a painting which bears his signature. So if you could just describe the personal interactions that you had, had with him um, over the history of, of um, your learning art and your being exposed to art and him actually having taught you. Uh, do you remember any inspirational stories or unique moments that you'll never forget about Bashir Mirza? Well, there were many moments, I think, memorable ones. Uh, um, I met Bashir Mirza in the 70s when I was an art student and he was our teacher. He just uh, returned from Germany and he had the swagger and kind of confidence and, uh, you know, like, I'm here to conquer the world, look. And, and that's what he was. Bashir Mirza was always that way. Um, and um, then when he created... Um, the Lonely Girl series, we were introduced to this, uh, you know, major talent and uh, I remember he was doing one of the paintings in his own studio at the art school, which is the Central Institute of Arts and Crafts, so we saw that, you know, emerge and, you know, be created. It was a fascinating experience. He used to frequently talk about his experiences in Germany and how, um, 
his own response to um, um, German painters, which I think was very insightful. And then later on, I knew him as a colleague almost. Uh, he always remained Dostad. He always introduced us as his students. And um, I worked with him uh, when he invited me to join the Synth Artists Association. And I worked with him on that as a colleague. He was the chairperson and I was the secretary general. And we tried to sort of bring the artists together. And he is there, Leila Shazada, you know, Nagori, and a lot of others. We sat together and tried to make uh, that uh, small uh, organization work. And Bashir Mazza put a lot of his own energy and resources into forming that organization making it work and I think very few people know that besides being an artist he was an activist um, politically very conscious he was meeting with all the great poets writers of his time and entertaining them in his house and uh, also <clears throat> he was very conscious of the social change because he himself had had a life full of struggle so he was always empathetic towards the you know less privileged and I always feel that his work if you look at his figures his figures are always about the real people uh, you know the, the daughters and sons of the soil they're, they're the people with these huge hands you know not manicured or you know kind of uh, dainty and their feet are big and they're you know able-bodied people so it was, his muse is always the common man. And uh, coming back to, you know, then I later on knew him uh, um, you know, as he became um, the great uh, you know, master, I interacted with him, interviewed him as I began to write. He always encouraged me to write. In fact, he gave me his first assignment, right, my first writing assignment. He was doing this calendar based on the lonely girl and he told me, well, you write me out your commentary on The Lonely Girl, which I did and is still with me and he was very, you know, kind of encouraged me to write throughout and uh, uh, my last interaction was with him when I went to interview him at his apartment. This was about a month or so before he passed away and strangely enough, he'd been in my thoughts and I'd called him one afternoon and they told me that, you know, he was sleeping, his uh, domestic help told me. And the next day we got the news he had died, or that evening we got the news that he had died. And someone uh, said that it, he died in the afternoon. So you know it was like uh, such a strange feeling. Uh, but she was, uh, was a tremendous person. You know, um, his body of work cannot do justice to the person that he was, larger than life, uh, very concerned. And of course he had another darker side to him which a lot of people experience that, you know, he was um, temperamental, he had, uh, you know, his marriage didn't work, he had a lot of uh, issues with, uh, you know, his family, but there was another side that we did not see and experience. Um, but what we saw of him was a tremendous amount of respect for women, um, sensitive to the uh, social political scenario of the country. And I also remember the time when, you know, he had done this uh, collage of the Lonely Girl series on some form of calendars, uh, you know, images. And I, uh, you know, told him like a <laughs> novice that I really didn't like that work. And uh, I thought, you know, he hadn't done justice to his talent. And, you know, he was not happy about the comment. This was at... Um, seminar that had been organized in Islamabad by the Pakistan National Council of the Arts. He really didn't like that. But I think he took it in his stride. And I think that was the greatness of Bashir Mirza. So Bashir Mirza's work was obviously seen as very strong and even progressive for his time uh, in some respects. Could you try and expand on and establish a link between his work and perhaps some inspiration that he drew from other art movements internationally uh, that you can sort of see in his work? I think his trip to Germany um, did influence him. He uh, first hand looked at the work of the German Expressionists and was influenced by that. 
And I think his color palette might have also been at that point been inspired by the work he saw um, uh, in Germany. And um, so uh, if we look at his, uh, just before he left he was doing these drawings uh, which were, um, you know, he, he did the Portrait of Pakistan series in which he did pen and ink drawings of all the different people from the different provinces. And then um, he was doing these uh, very, you know, muted colors and, you know, sort of um, compositions. And then he went to Germany and you can see the leap uh, in his work in which he is uh, more confidently handling color and then, of course, looking at the modern woman in his, um, you know, Lonely Girl series. That, that, I think, there was an influence. Because having been in the environment where you know, the German expressionists were working and visiting the museums, I think the color palette and the way the color was used by them did inspire him. But then we must also um, remember that Bashir Mirza grew up in an environment full of color. His father uh, ran a tanga workshop where uh, the tangas were painted and mended and you know, embellished. So um, he already had it in his system that he was exposed to uh, you know, the primary color palette and strong colors as is found in our folk art. So you know, maybe this was a combination of things and maybe this triggered off that kind of early memory of color, uh, of saturated color that produced this body of work. And the second influence when you look at it, it is uh, when we have um, Souza, his interaction with Souza. This is somewhere in the 80s uh, that he worked with Souza. Uh, Souza came and lived with him, and I think he worked with him. That we see him um, working uh, to create something uh, which is now known as the acrylic series because the distortion that Souza does in his work and the way he also uses. But in Souza's work, he uses the black line to, um, you know, outline his figures and sort of distort them in many ways, um, or to fragment the form. And uh, Bashir Mirza did not do exactly that, but I think the inspiration may have come from him to use that line that he was so good at using, and who we had a great facility over uh, using it eventually. Uh, to create his acrylic series, which are portraits, human figures, uh, also landscapes, different things. So for all those art lovers out there, uh, where would you recommend uh, they go to view maybe uh, some of the publicly available works of Bashir Mirza that are available here in Pakistan? Well, uh, some of his last works um, and uh, the works that he did um, also uh, the, the body of his nuke series which he did when he was in Australia in protest of the nuclear testing uh, uh, that is available at the Arts Council uh, phase uh, E.R. Faridi permanent art collection you can go and see it in Karachi uh, some of them are there and if you want to see some of his other work, the National Gallery has some of his work, not too much, but mostly it's in private collection. And it's a pity that the Lonely Girl series really, almost all of it is in private collection. Uh, so, um, but the good part is that Bashir Mirza did two portfolios and a lot of posters. His portfolios were the Portrait of Pakistan, um, which is available or has been available in uh, you know, printed form and he did the, a portfolio of his Lonely Girl series and also he did posters um, with his drawings on them. So I think um, they are available maybe with collectors but he did try to um, make his work accessible to a larger number of people.